There's a lot to sort through in this tragic case, and a lot we still don't know about the moments of panic when gunfire erupted in Old Town, Arvada. And tonight we're going to take you through what we know so far. And we begin with Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kowaleski and a deeper look at the events that left three people dead. They are the questions police have not yet answered. Who killed the gunman and how did Good Samaritan Johnny Hurley die? Before we get to those answers, let's open with a critical point. The details we have learned are difficult to share because we understand these are instantaneous decisions made in a high stress life and death situation. In the hours since Monday's shooting, Arvada police have confirmed the gunman was responsible for what has been described as a brutal murder of Arvada police officer Gordon Beasley. The details we are now providing you come independently from three ranking and informed sources privy to key information at the highest levels. First, as Arvada PD confirmed, the gunman shot and killed Officer Gordon Beasley. Seconds later, eyewitnesses have reported Samaritan John Hurley responded to the sound of gunshots. Our source is now confirming it was Hurley who shot and killed the gunman. And now the most difficult of the new information. Our sources tell us Samaritan Johnny Hurley was killed by gunfire from a responding officer. Throughout the day, our news managers and members of our investigative team have been in lengthy discussions with our Vada City leaders, making sure they were aware of the information we have uncovered and were prepared to share with you. In response to our calls, our Vada PD offered this statement. We will not confirm until the investigation team finishes its interviews and reviews forensic information. Here's more for you to consider. Since Monday's shooting, Arvada PD has not said how Samaritan Hurley was killed, only calling him a hero. Again, it's important to stress this is not an indictment on the decision by the officer. That officer was responding to an active shooter situation. What he or she saw prior to the decision is not yet known. It's fair to conclude the decision to shoot had to be made in an instant. Through our sources, we now know the missing details. Also, it's standard protocol in these situations to conduct ballistic reviews, and those take time. It's also standard to conduct extensive interviews with witnesses and first responders. The Jeffco County Sheriff's Office is now leading this investigation, and we expect to hear more in the next 48 hours from Arvada PD. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. The result of an outside investigation into the police response in Arvada could still be weeks away. Now, we have learned that police are reviewing footage from cameras in the area. Now, Arvada officers don't have body cameras. So with such a chaotic scene, it takes time to gather evidence to try and understand the split second decisions made by officers. So we want to give you some context on how police prepare for and respond to these active shooter situations. Denver 7's Andy Guajardo spoke to a police trainer. I spoke with a former director of a law enforcement program out of Minnesota. She has more than two decades of experience and tells me when officers respond to a situation where more than one person is armed, it can sometimes be very confusing. She breaks down the protocols that should have been followed by officers and that good Samaritan, John Hurley. The initial 911 call came in on Monday around 1.15 p.m. for a suspicious incident near the Arvada Library. Shots fired. 15 minutes later, dispatch received calls for shots fired and that an officer was hit by gunfire. Uh, we have an uh, officer down. Well, the second wave of officers obviously don't, do not know who's who. Mylan Masson is a former director of the law enforcement program at Hennepin Technical College. She also served on the Minnesota Police Officer Standard Training Board more than two decades. We reached out for her expertise given her experience analyzing high profile cases, including police force used against George Floyd. She says in situations like these, police responses heightened. They may not have been updated as to the fact that the citizen who helped them out, they don't know if he's the actual killer, did he shoot the police officer or what. She says the first step is for officers to take cover and give orders, but adds that it's difficult when they're responding to an open plaza. So their next move is to immediately gain control of the weapons. What they're going to do is they're going to command the person to put the gun down. 
And this is where she says every second counts. If that Good Samaritan didn't put the gun down and came towards the officers, that's where some confusion could come and that's where the officers may shoot. A decision she says officers must make in seconds. You can guess or estimate maybe five seconds. You know, sometimes you have to make that decision to shoot in 1.5 seconds. Now look, we want to be very transparent. There's still a lot of unanswered questions here. It's unclear if officers followed protocol. We also don't know where John Hurley had his weapon. Was it in his hand, on his holster, around the ground? These are all questions we will continue to press for to really get the story of what unfolded out here in Old Town, Arvada. We know it's going to take some time because the Arvada Police Department, well, they don't have body cameras. But what we do know is that the Arvada Police Chief says Hurley was a true hero. And so does this community in Arvada, Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. Thank you, Addie. And Arvada police say they believe Johnny Hurley's courageous actions likely disrupted what could have been a larger loss of life in Monday's attack. And gun owner groups say being armed when an attack happens makes all the difference. We have firearms as tools. Uh, they're tools to, to protect ourselves and protect others. The gun community is not one to go out and say, hey, we just want to you know, kill for killing. That's, that's not us. Uh, we are... Uh, we want to protect. We want to protect ourselves. We want to protect our families. We want to protect our friends and, and our community. And I, I think that's what this uh, this great hero did. The Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Group stresses every gun owner should undergo extensive training to make sure they can respond in the safest possible way to threats. And the fact that Johnny Hurley was able to compose himself enough to stop the Arvada shooter is impressive. When we dig into the data, it shows that it is rare for a citizen to stop a gunman like that. The FBI tracked active shooter events between 2000 and 2019. In 345 attacks, just four shooters were killed by citizens. That is roughly 1.2% of the cases. And this all comes as President Biden is pushing a new plan to crack down on gun violence. For perspective, crime rates have been trending up since last year, and now police are concerned things could worsen through the summer. The president is laying out what he calls a comprehensive strategy. The administration will allow communities to spend federal pandemic dollars on hiring police officers, as well as running programs that are proven to prevent gun violence. It will also make more federal resources available for police departments. And finally, it sets up a zero tolerance policy for gun dealers who break the law.